Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. Okay, so what I want to demonstrate is how to look at voltage ripple on a power supply, on a typical power supply output. We're going to look at a 3.3 volt um, output and we're going to look at the ripple and we're going to simulate that with the um, generator here. Uh, just show you an ideal waveform, that way I can just demonstrate how to use the scope and how to um, actually take a good ripple measurement and uh, also to use the FFT and what you can see with the FFT that you may not otherwise be able to see. Um, and since all the scopes come with FFT now, um, why not use it? So we want to start learning how to use that as well. Um, at the end of the video, in case you care, uh, I'm going to open up the soap box to show you something cool that I'm going to use in some of these tests. Um, but I'll do that at the end of the video so I don't take your time. Sorry. <laughs> um, all right. Let's watch this. This can be a short video, and I'm going to do a lot more like this one. And we're going to start with doing simple things and then looking at real power supplies and looking at real signals and so on. I've got quite a mess here. I'm going to build up this audio amplifier power supply. Um, but anyway, let's go ahead and jump into this video and, and uh, go through this little demonstration. What I want to do is set this generator up for 3.3 volts DC with 100 millivolts peak to peak ripple. And I've already done that and I'll just show you what I did. I, I've got sine wave selected and I select frequency and I go 100 K Hertz and then amplitude I say 100 millivolts peak to peak and then offset I've already like say I've already done this by just repeating 3.3 volts DC so we got a 3.3 volt DC signal and we have 100 millivolts peak to peak and it's 100 kilohertz so Typical power supply could be switching 100 kilohertz, 3.3 is common output, and 100 millivolts. You know, it's reasonable ripple, I guess, a little bit high probably, but uh, just something for us to measure. Okay, it's a nice round number, and I want to show how to measure it on the oscilloscope. Okay, let's scan over to the scope. We just see a line here in the middle of the screen. Currently we're at 50 volts per division, that's not very good, and we're at 2 milliseconds per division. So we could hit the auto setup and see what that gives us, but, um, but let's just change this to 1 volt per division so we can see our 3.3 volts. 0 volts right there, and I'm right here at the center of the screen, that's what that's telling me, that marker. And I have one, two, three, it looks like eh, about 3.3 volts, um, one volt per. Now, the thing you can do so you get better resolution is bring this down here near the bottom. Let's say we come down here to the minus three volt scale, three divisions down from center, two, nine, yep, there we go, right there. Okay, then we can go half a volt per. And now we go one, two, three, four, five, six, six, and somewhere in the middle, you know, we could really focus on that if we want to. And it's a half of it, uh, 500 millivolts per division. So, you know, that looks like about 3.3 volts. And we can see by this fuzzy kind of fat line that we have some ripple going on there. Um, I can spread this out. Okay, I almost captured it there. It's kind of hard to see. Have to move the trigger. Well, let's see, move the trigger up here. I just pushed it in and it popped up there. But that's kind of hard to trigger on that too. All right, it's going to be hard to see ripple that way. So when you want to look at the ripple, you want to just focus on that. So first, we can see that we have 3.3 volts. So now let's look at the ripple. So what we do is, I'll bring that up in the center of the screen. It's minus 130 there, 80, 70. 
right there center screen okay now we want to zoom in on the amplitude so and let's spread this out a little bit let's push this button in for the trigger center it okay now we got you know trigger centered uh, trigger center right here and here so we're crossing zero right there it's where the triggers telling us to capture the signal so it starts to write the signal here and it comes back across here anyway so there we go we're at 20 millivolts per division so if we start from the center we're one two and a half and one two and a half down so two and a half that's 40 uh, 50 millivolts up and down 50 millivolts peak 50 millivolts negative peak you know 20 millivolts per division so that's how you can zoom in and and look at your ripple okay now there's another way to do this another thing from this we can see that's a little bit noisy and what we can do is we can look at the F FFT so we got the FFT right here and that brings up this screen so once we're there we can go to um, right now it's it's centered at 100 megahertz that's pretty high frequency um, and it's 50 megahertz per division so let's see if we can come down to okay now we're down to 5 megahertz per division but the, still 5 megahertz division come on that's pretty hard to see 100 kilohertz so come over here and when we start to make this go a little bit slower we start to see this go to a little lower frequency we're down to 250 kilohertz per division I don't know if you can see that let me zoom in on that so as I change the horizontal time base you can see how the hertz per division is lowering now I'm down to 100 kilohertz per division so and my center frequency is still 100 meg so I want to change that so I can hit this and spin this down to say 100 kilohertz put that in the center well there you go now you can kind of see it popping over here okay come over to 100 50 78 80 almost 100 okay 100 kilohertz so I'm right there in the center but my waveforms kind of chopped off there at the top uh, so I come to the next window and here's my reference level that's where I can adjust the level of voltage that I think I'm looking at whoops get to the right thing here and so I'm see I'm going this way waveform went up so I went the wrong way so let's go the other way whoop alright the uh, this knob accelerates as I move quick so it kind of takes off on me it's it's nice that you can go through it quickly but then again okay I'm kind of doing it where the center of the screens right there normally you might want to use more of the window so anyway bring it up here now I've got the math set up I went to math and I selected or sorry I went to measure and source I went to math and oops and then once I went to math I went to type and selected maximum so that's how I got that and then I've got the RMS and the maximum for channel one okay so you can see the level there minus 30.75 now I could tell you that you can get a better reading um, on FFT when you go to go to I'm going to the acquire menu over here on the scope you can't see what I'm doing because you're seeing the screen there of course but and then you go to acquisition and you go down to average and Take an average reading versus peak or normal. Um, it gives a better FFT. 
Okay, so it's on average, it's only on four, uh, four averages, not very many, but it still takes, a, you know, four, you can go more to get a better, to get a little better filtering. It just takes a while for it to uh, settle down. So minus 29.11 dB. So if you do the math on that, um, if you do the 29 point, I'm going to plug out my calculator, you can't see what I'm doing, um, and put the negative sign there, and then divide that by 20, and then take the anti-log, 10x, and that'll give you the ripple. And I get 35 millivolts. Now we have 100 millivolts peak to peak, half of that's 50 millivolts, and the square root of that is 35.35 millivolts. So this thing is telling us 35 millivolts, and my quick calc or you know doing the math says we should be at 35.35. So it's pretty darn close. Um, you can take more averages. You can do different things to get um, better accuracy. Uh, I want to show you something on this scope that's pretty cool. Is you can go to see, go to math, our FFT, have that selected. And we're on page two of three. Let's go to page three. And it has an auto set. Pretty cool. Another thing I want to point out is it has points. We're only at 4,000 points. We can go down and select even more points if we want to. And that'll give you, you can see. Now we have to wait for the average to settle out, but you can see how much of a better signal we get. Now one thing this shows is the noise level is way down here around 100 dB. That's way down in the dirt. It's way down there. Okay now let me just hit this auto set button and see what that does. Okay it changed the position of our, um, our reference. Uh, the, the value here is minus 29.14 that's pretty nice looking signal the value of the FFT is you can see how clean your ripple is I mean all our ripple looks like it's a one frequency and there's a little bit of noise out here at this high frequency um, but it's not very much as I see a little thing popping up here it's pretty low um, we're at minus 69 dB here. So all that stuff is very low. If you saw some peaks around here, you might think you need to do some filtering to get rid of that. But you know, this is coming from a function generator, so we'd expect to see a clean wave. Okay, I'm gonna just push the square waves button. Now we have to wait since we're averaging takes a little while for it to start doing some math on all these but you can see another peak popping up here which you'd expect to see on a square wave now what here let me go to scroll through the pages we're at 50 kilohertz per division so 50 100 150 two. so that's um, 200 kilohertz way so this is one kilohertz so that's 300 kilohertz now I have my XY window, I have my cursor measurement up there, I can turn that off. But with the cursor just turned on, I can move my X and Y around and I can place the cursors on those uh, to look at. The other thing I can do is to see more of these, to see what else is going to... I can go back to math here. Instead of 50 kilohertz per division, I can go say 100 kilohertz per division. Now, it always starts with the center, well, I mean, you know, it starts often, especially if you hit the automatic thing, it'll, it'll put the, uh, you know, your biggest waveform right here in the middle of the screen. So the center says it's at 100 kilohertz. Um, my frequency counter says 100 kilohertz, which we knew because we set that up on our scope, we knew what the switching frequency was. So, um, but what we can do is we can move the center 
whoops, wrong way. See that acceleration? <laughs> if I move that button kind of fast, it just takes off. Um, but I can move that right. So the center says it's getting close 500 kilohertz. So at center, I'm 500, 4, 3, 2, 1. 100 kilohertz, 300, 500. Square wave, what you're going to see, um, a square wave is made with all the um, odd harmonics. So that's why you see them at every odd harmonic. And you can see the values of the waveform there. And you can see how clean this looks. Uh, the signal is has a really nice FFT. Um, if you had a scope, let me just show you, for instance, this max point. We have quite a few points. If we were only at a thousand points, which some some of the scopes have, uh, that's what you'd see. You don't see as much detail. Uh, see how fat this is? It's a wider band. It's taking more information. It's kind of spreading it out and it's not getting you the re the resolution that you get with more points. So 2,000 points starts to look a lot better. Still not great, but it does look a lot better. Twice as good as in fact, right? Even better than that, right? And then 4,000 actually starts to 4,000, I think, at 100 kilohertz, um, you start getting a pretty decent measurement. So I think you want to make sure you get 4,000 points. And 8,000, you see it get even better, a little smoother. And at 16, at 100 kilohertz, it doesn't really make much of a difference. I, it's hard for me to see anything different there. But definitely at 4k is much better than one so some of these uh scopes are they all have f you know pretty much every scope has an fft now but um you can see how much better you know it works with more points and these uh, signals have have pretty nice fft so that that really helps you uh look at your ripple we're going to look at some real power supplies and we'll see how different it is from this ideal square wave and sine wave. But I just wanted to give you, give you a, a way to, you know, in case you haven't, you're not familiar with looking at RIP1, a DC output, AC couple it so you can look at the voltage. Now, one thing I want to point out here is when you're doing this, you see how I've got this window kind of filled up. If I were, like, let's say to, you can see my waveform changing. If I'm not zoomed in, it's, I'm not really getting good resolution up here. So it's hard for my FFT to get good resolution. I still see points, but you know, it's, the signal is kind of lost in the mud. So see, it's starting to look a little better. So you just want to amplify this. Now you don't want to be off screen though. If, if you're blowing up the input, then that's your, you know, your. That's not going to work well for you either. So you want to, you want to keep your signal inside the window, but you want to use as much of the window as you can. Just like with your own eyeballs, helps you, um, helps you read the scales better. Same with uh, the math. You know, it, it has better resolution when it can see more. Okay, just want to point that out. Some of the functions on how to use the FFT. I think a lot of the scopes are similar. Um, just a matter of points and the resolution you get with maybe a signal that you might not with, with some of the other ones. Um, or you may have a 20,000 hour scope that you'll get a little bit better than this. But I'll tell you what, I have a 20,000 hour scope at work and, and I think this signal stands up pretty well to it. All right, guys, I hope this was helpful. Give me a thumbs up if you like this. Um, subscribe, please, and uh, stay tuned for the next. We're going to do a lot more power supply stuff. Hey, guys. Okay, let's open up the soap box. I was kind of excited to get it. Um, and, yeah, I'm kind of spending a lot of money on test stuff. Uh, 
got to finish building my house in life and uh, so I'll just show you guys this quietly. <laughs> Look at this. Pretty cool, huh? Thermal imaging camera. Oh. As I drop and break it. Wow. That came out there easy. Um, thermal imaging camera. Uh, okay. It's just... Look at that, smiley faces. I'm kind of smiling about this. <laughs> wow. Jeez. Okay, strap, camera. Pretty short, colorful little booklet, it looks like. That's neat. I'm going to show you how to use a thermal camera um, doing these power supply tests. Uh, looks like USB cable. Cool, huh? Yeah, you know, little charger, I guess. So, <clears throat> okay, we're gonna talk about these thermal cameras and how to use them. Um, they're getting to be more affordable, um, although, jeez, okay, more affordable, right? Um, pretty cool camera. Really excited about that. Okay, I'll just fire this bad boy up, got to charge it up, and hey, what happened to my screen here? Uh, sorry, guys. Hey, thanks for watching. Give me a thumbs up if you like this stuff, okay? Uh, give me some ideas of what you'd like to see uh, as far as um, troubleshooting or uh, testing, designing, power supplies, what kind of power supplies you're interested in. Um, buck converters, boost converters, flybacks, forward converters, active clamp forward converters, you know, uh, let me know what you're interested in and I will we'll try to do a video to help you out. And meanwhile, we're going to uh, just keep pushing ahead. Thanks, guys.